What does Donald Trump really think about Russian links to his election? The US president says he believes Vladimir Putin's denials, but also accepts CIA confirmation of meddling. Is he trying to influence the criminal investigations that could lead to impeachment and paying lip service to Moscow? This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the programme. I'm Laura Kyle. Whether at home or abroad, Donald Trump can't seem to shake off discussion about whether or not Russia interfered in his election last year. And this time, the debate on Russian meddling and manipulation is the president's own doing. Trump made contradictory statements whilst meeting world leaders at the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation in Vietnam. Trump met Vladimir Putin and appeared to accept the Russian president's denial of involvement. Then Trump told reporters he had full confidence in U.S. intelligence agencies after the CIA said Russia did meddle in the race for the White House. I believe very much in our intelligence agencies. Now, at the same time, uh, I want to be able, because I think it's very important, to get along with Russia, to get along with China, to get along with Vietnam, to get along with lots of countries, because we have a lot of things we have to solve. I believe that President Putin really feels, and he feels strongly, that he did not meddle in our election. What he believes is what he believes. What I believe is that we have to get to work. I believe that he feels that he and Russia did not meddle in the election. As to whether I believe it or not, I'm with our agencies, especially as currently constituted with their leadership. I believe in our intel agencies, our intelligence agencies. I've worked with them very strongly. Well, the backlash towards Trump's flip-flopping has been swift. U.S. Senator John McCain issued a statement saying there's nothing America first about taking the word of a KGB colonel over that of the American intelligence community. There's no principled realism in cooperating with Russia to prop up the murderous Assad regime, which remains the greatest obstacle to a political solution that would bring an end to the bloodshed in Syria. Vladimir Putin does not have America's interests at heart. To believe otherwise is not only naive, but also places our national security at risk. The CIA also responded with a statement on behalf of Director Mike Pompeo. The director stands by and has always stood by the January 2017 intelligence community assessment entitled Assessing Russian Activities and Intentions in Recent U.S. Elections. The intelligence assessment with regard to Russian election meddling has not changed. So lots to talk about and joining us to do so from Moscow, Alexei Klebnikov, International Relations Analyst at the Russian International Affairs Council. From Birmingham, Scott Lucas, Professor of International and American Studies at the University of Birmingham. And via Skype from London is Lisa Osofsky, Europe and Middle East Chair of Exeger and the former Deputy General Counsel for the FBI. Great to have you all with us. Thanks for joining us on Inside Story. Scott, we've got Trump believing Putin and he believes his intelligence agencies, what do we believe? Well, what we believe is that between his Saturday statement, where he said he believed Putin, and when he called the three former heads of U.S. intelligence agencies political hacks, his advisors got a hold of Trump and said, look, you've got to stop trashing the intelligence agencies. Uh, so he gave this statement, which on the one hand said, oh, yes, 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 I, are, as they are currently constituted, uh, our intelligence agencies are fine. But then you'll notice he reaffirmed the belief in Putin. The fact of the matter is, is that Trump's line, as it has been for months, is twofold. One, he's a great admirer of Vladimir Putin. But two, more importantly, he wants to get rid of the Trump-Russia investigation. Uh, he's done that through various methods in recent months, up to the point of firing personnel, like former FBI James, uh, Director James Comey. Mm. He's now invoking the fact that we need to get rid of the investigation because it's affecting U.S. foreign policy. Certainly, Scott, we'll be looking more into the investigations and later in this discussion. First of all, Alexi, I want to get an idea of the reaction there in Russia to this particular story, because the Russia-US story will not go away, will it? And every time we see Putin and Trump chatting, there's huge speculation about the relationship between these two men. So um, as for uh, Trump's attitude towards Putin, whether, you know, he trusts him or believes him, it's pretty outstanding that, uh, you know, he talks about trust because there is a, 
no trust between Russia and the U.S. and uh, Russia's relations are currently in a deep state of crisis. They're at, the, at their lowest point uh, currently. So uh, this is why it's very hard to say what Trump's genuine approach or attitude towards Putin and his words. What's more importantly, I believe, is that basically Trump uh, purposefully tries to concentrate and focus on things which uh, the United States and Russia have in common. So basically, the, the um, joint statement which was released uh, by Putin and Trump uh, after their quick talks on the margins of uh, APEC summit was concentrated on Syria. So the topic which was uh, which unites bo uh, both of them, uh, fight against terrorism and uh, the the uh, successes of the deal which was struck between Trump and Putin. But in Alexei, July. many observers would uh, say when, that's merely a distraction tactic. Probably, yeah, it's uh, it's quite le legit point. But uh, I mean, again, uh, this um, I think that both Trump and Putin they prefer to concentrate on things which they have in common rather than on differences. Uh, and it's very important to remember that Trump has a huge opposition domestically in terms of improving relations with Russia. All these Russia affairs, Russia-related investigations, they limit Trump and his administration moves uh, and leave really little room for maneuver with uh, regard um, U.S.-Russia relations. So oh, Scott, of this course, is why, I mean, if, if I could just jump in illogical. there, because uh, of course Trump wants the conversation to be about issues of mutual concern between Russia and uh, the U.S. But why is it, do you think, that Trump is so keen to have a good relationship with Vladimir Putin? Why does he go out of his way to say that he believes him when, or he believes that Vladimir Putin believes that Russia did not meddle in the U.S. elections? I think it's very interesting that what Russia is trying to do is to try to exploit uh, Trump's personal view to get foreign policy advantage. And I think Alexei pointed to that. And that is because Trump just simply off the top of his head says, Putin's a great guy, we've got to work with him. What Russia then tries to do is say, all right, let's leverage that to pull the U.S. along in Syria. Uh, the Russians have been able, for example, to back the Assad regime. Uh, despite the fact that regime has killed hundreds of thousands of Syrians and that millions have been displaced. And they successfully have cornered the U.S., where it really now has to accept Moscow's vision of the way forward. That is, Assad stays in power for at least the foreseeable future, and that there's a political settlement, which is really on Russia's terms, even if the country is partitioned. I think Russia is also going to try to leverage that with Trump over Ukraine that, of course, uh, the annexation of Crimea mm. and Russia continuing to try to encourage separatism in eastern Ukraine. And finally, most importantly, I think the Russians are going to try to use the personal relationship with Trump to fight back against Congress passing additional sanctions. Remember, Trump only reluctantly signed those additional sanctions back in the summer, and Russia would love to try to get that legislation rolled back. Alexei, would you broadly agree, though, with Scott's analysis that Putin is looking ultimately to get those sanctions off of Russia? Well, uh, Putin consistently reiterates and repeats his uh, position that uh, Moscow was not the first who initiated those sanctions. So this won't be Moscow who first will ask to lift the sanctions. So this is why he constantly also points out to Obama administration um, majorly putting major blame uh, on that for his administration, because they ruined relations, they soured uh, U.S.-Russia relations. And this is why, uh, I mean, if Putin decides to ask to lift the sanctions, that will be perceived as a sign of weakness, which Russia cannot afford itself. So this is why, uh, I mean, publicly, Russia won't ask for that. But uh, as for the effect of those sanctions, the most important one, the most significant ones, uh, are about uh, restrictions for uh, access to uh, Western funds, Western mm. uh, money, and of course it's uh, high technologies, uh, so which hugely affect uh, Russia's oil industry, so projects uh, of oil drilling in Arctic uh, where n new technologies are needed. So that's actually hurts. Okay. But uh, again, I, I won't think that you no know, Putin uh, or, you know, 
Russian leadership will ever ask for right. lifting the sanctions. Okay. Lisa, let's bring the of conversation course, back to underlined... Russia's interference, alleged interference, however you want to put it, in the election. And how reassured will US intelligence agencies be when Trump says he believes them? Because they, of course, the CIA report of January has concluded that there was Russian meddling in the 2016 elections. I think the question for the US um, people who are, are always focused on developing intelligence and and pursuing investigative um, mandates is is really all about what are we in the middle of? How do I assess my information carefully? Where's my next step? Whether it's Bob Mueller running uh, the special counsel's office or um, long term CIA associates and 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 folks running these invest these agencies they're going to be looking at what what is their day job their job isn't to pay great attention to what's going on with the electorate and mm. the public their day job is to put their heads down and get on with it the way it, they've always done regardless of exactly what's going on out in the political landscape OK, but how upset might they be that Trump is talking at all, given that this is effectively a criminal investigation underway? Well, I think if you think about it, you know, put it in context. Remember, these investigations, Mueller's investigation was going on uh, before Mueller gets appointed, basically. Remember, Jim Comey, then sitting um, head of the FBI, testifies before a Senate permanent committee that there's ongoing investigation of alleged ties and alleged ability of uh, foreign governments to affect the U.S. elections. He gets he gets um, taken out of his office, put in place by Donald Trump's acting attorney general, Rod Roth Roth Rosenstein, puts in place Bob Mueller, mm. who had been a long time serving director of the FBI a uh, war hero, Congressional Medal of Honor winner. You know, really remember when he gets appointed, everybody seemed to be very, very happy with that appointment. He comes in in May of 2017 and he picks up where some of these investigations had already begun. I guess what I'm saying is for people whose life work, like mine, was running investigations mm. for government, your job is to take the evidence where it may lead, to okay. put your head down and look at the federal crimes that might be out there or your mandate as an intelligence agency leader and see where, you, you, where you're meant to go next based on the facts, based on the developments on the ground. Okay. So I think if, let's put it in the right context in terms of what these for you know, folks whose job is, is slightly different from a political agenda Got and you. think about right. what they're doing okay. their day to day. Well, the alleged Russian influence in the US election last year has cast a long shadow over Trump's short presidency. The FBI was aware of attempted Russian hacking in US voter registration databases in June 2016. The FBI was also involved in new revelations, as were the CIA and National Security Agency. Reports leaked to U.S. media organizations sparked months of investigations and Trump denials. A joint report by the FBI, CIA and NSA in January concluded Russian President Vladimir Putin personally ordered a so-called influence campaign because the Kremlin preferred Trump in the White House instead of Hillary Clinton. Special Investigator Robert Mueller was assigned to look into relations between Russia and Trump. And so far, Mueller has indicted two of Trump's election campaign managers, Paul Manafort and Rick Gates, and charged a third person, George Papadopoulos. The question, Scott, that I want to put to you next is, what's next in Mueller's investigation? We've got these three men already indicted and charged. Who's next on the hit list? Well, Robert Mueller is very capable, and he'll move step by step. So let's, first of all, he will not bring new charges until he is sure they will stick. And that's how serious this is, because mm -hmm. I think we're looking at Michael Flynn, who uh, was the former national security advisor, but before that, as a member of the Trump campaign team, had been in contact with the Russian ambassador about lifting sanctions on uh, Moscow. I think he's looking probably at financial links that may implicate eventually Jared Kushner, uh, President Trump's son-in-law. He's looking at meetings between Russian officials, Kremlin-linked officials, and Trump senior advisors. Now, whether this means Donald Trump Jr. 
is also in the frame because of a June 2016 meeting. That's important. And then most importantly, he's investigating Trump for obstruction of justice with the firing of James Comey in May of, 2000, uh, May of 2017 mm. and with uh, possible deceptive statements uh, that have tried to deflect or even shut down the investigation. I don't think we're going to see Trump in the frame publicly in terms of impeachment or criminal charges for several months, but I think he will be there by next summer, and I would be surprised if Trump's in office by this time next year. Lisa, that's a pretty interesting um, standpoint. Do you, do, you, do you agree with Scott's timeline? I'd say that there's uh, that really the purpose of Mueller's investigation is not to bring down Trump. The purpose of Mueller's investigation is to explore how hard it was or easy it was and make harder in the future for foreign governments to interfere with future elections. He's looking at what was and wasn't disclosed. So what's hugely important about the Manafort and Gates indictments, they were, they were one of their charges is that they were operatives for the Ukrainian government when it was pro-Russia without disclosing what they were up to mm. as lobbyists. We in the U.S., we want to know who's trying to influence our politics, just as we do in London, where I live now. We want to know these things. There are rules about what lobbyists are doing. So Mueller's mandate is very, very broad. He's appointed in May, and he's made pretty quick work. He hasn't even been there six months. He's already brought in three indictments. And in terms of what might be happening next, let's think about Mike Flynn. We know Mike Flynn's son is in the frame as well, at least as, as far as um, as far as one can know from the outside, I'm not, you know, we're no longer in the middle of these investigations as we sit here today. But we know that Mueller's, that um, Flynn's son is in the frame. Just as um, if you guys will recall back to Enron, we had Mr. and Mrs. Fastow. And at some point, there was a decision made. Fastow, are you willing to give give up, you know, let's give yourself up? We will, you know, and we'll, we will, we will go easy on your wife. So speculate, guys, whether there might be some attempt to do some trading off about who actually gets indicted, who doesn't. And remember, George Papadopoulos gets picked up at um, in end July in the Dulles airport. Mm. He doesn't get charged until third of October. What does that say to me as a former prosecutor? I can tell you that Bob Mueller would have used his crack team of agents that he's got. Remember, it's not just FBI. It's, it's, it's agents from all over the federal government and former agents, crack appellate litigators, the whole team. They would have used this time to think about okay. his Papadopoulos, credible witness, and will he work with us? Will he wear wires? Alexi, think of Alexi let's just get um, some idea of, of how... Russia, the Kremlin is watching this investigation unfold. As Lisa says, it's very carefully managed. The net seems to be closing in. Are you hearing anything from the Kremlin about it? Is there any inkling that, yes, Russia was involved in America's elections? Right. So um, the main line of, uh, of Kremlin is that yeah, it's all uh, kind of a joke that Russia uh, was I mean, interfered in the U.S. elections. So Putin, on all major global platforms and everywhere in interviews, he uh, repeats that that that's kind of a joke, and that basically that anti-Russian hysteria uh, is driven by political conjuncture in the United States. So basically, the bottom line is that Kremlin uh, does not. I mean, denies all allegations. That's one thing. The second thing. If uh, uh, to look at the logic, I mean, of Kremlin, if to hypothetically uh, think that Russia get interfered into U.S. elections, uh, so the Russian leadership uh, think this way: that why the United States and Washington can, uh, you know, interfere into elections or internal affairs of other countries. So why Russia, for example, cannot do the same with regard to uh, its own elections? So this kind of logic, I think, might be behind that. OK. Scott, what, what, do, you, what do you make of that? If, if Russians are thinking that this whole thing is a joke, what, what do Americans think? Well, I think many Americans now realize how serious this is. Because let's be clear, Russia did interfere in the U.S. elections. 
And the line from the Kremlin, it's a joke, is of course to say, oh, look, look, nothing to see here, move along. We've established the fact, and I think most Americans now acknowledge that Russians did hack uh, the Democratic National Committee, key advisors to Hillary Clinton, and other institutions. We have established that Russian outlets helped disseminate that information before the election of Donald Trump in November 2016. We are now at the point, and this is, I think, the next step, as to whether Russian put money into the Trump campaign or put money around the Trump campaign, again, to try to put its finger on the scales before the election. We have never had this extent of foreign interference in a U.S. election. And so for Russia to simply say, well, the U.S. did this in the past, that's a smokescreen. Uh, I agree with Lisa in part that there are wider issues that Bob Mueller is investigating to make sure that this can't happen again. Mm -hmm. But let's be clear, he's also investigating what happened in this specific case. But it's taking quite a long time, isn't it, to uh, reach a point where we um, kind of portion blame in the U.S. and even before looking to Russia to make sure it doesn't happen again. Lisa, do you think, or when is that going to happen? And is it going to happen? I think, to be honest, does, does Bob Mueller think at all about what is my timeline for um, keeping this in front of the American public? No. He's thinking, I've got an appointment. I've only been in there since May. I need to show a budget. I need to show I'm moving on this. I've got three indictments under my belt. I am moving. I'm showing that Congress and the rest of the American public and everybody who's paying attention from all over the world that I mean business and I'm moving through this investigation in a professional and in a in a very um, heads down way. And in America, what does that mean? That means working from the bottom, working your way up. So you start with a Papadopoulos, you would approach him at the end of July. We don't know exactly what he was doing in that interim period when he before he got charged. But safe to say, if you're a prosecutor who thinks you might have the opportunity to use an insider to develop further information, to wear a wire, however you whatever tools you're using, you're going to do that. And 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 Bob Mueller is well aware of how best to use the tools at his disposal whether it's on the investigative side, remember he ran the FBI, big wig in the Justice Department many years ago, and he also understands Congress. As the head of the FBI at the time, he had to appear before Congress, appear before subcommittees. He understands the terrain better than most. His job now, put his head down, develop okay. the evidence, and seek it wherever it leads. Um, Alexi, at this point in time, the jury's still out as to whether this Mueller investigation will lead to Trump's impeachment. If it does, where does that leave Putin? Rather out in the cold. Mm, I don't think that uh, Kremlin seriously um, thinks uh, that that might happen. So, um, I don't know. It's uh, uh, For Kremlin, it's kind of a... Uh, so the main um, argument line is that uh, this establishment, the, the, the uh, American establishment, which now currently uh, anti-Trump and which hinders uh, you know, uh, him from basically implementing his agenda, uh, his promises uh, during his electoral campaign, okay. uh, that all seen as and we will have to leave Sorry? the discussion there. Sorry to interrupt you there, Alexi. Alexi, we have run out of time. We'll certainly keep an eye on events, the Mueller investigation over the coming days, weeks, months. Very interesting indeed. Many thanks to all of you for joining us on Inside Story. Alexi Klebnikov, Scott Lucas and Lisa Osofsky. And thank you too for watching. You can see this programme again anytime by visiting our website. That's aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, do go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Laura Kyle, and the whole team here, it's bye for now.